Today, we will talk about all the ways that science has taught us we can slow or even reverse hair loss. One of the longest standing treatments for halting and reversing hair loss is so-called minoxidil. Minoxidil has been shown to be effective at slowing rates of hair loss in people that are starting to experience some hair loss because minoxidil does have this positive effect. At least most people would like to slow their rates of hair loss on their scalp anyway. It tells you that blood flow and delivery of oxygen and other nutrients from the blood is pretty critical, if not very critical, for the support of the hair growth cycle itself. So dosing of minoxidil is really important. If somebody's going to use minoxidil in order to try and slow or reverse hair loss, the really key thing is to get that dosage right. And I should also mention that there are two major routes by which people get minoxidil to the hair follicle. One is to take it systemically as a pill where it goes into the general circulation. The other is to take it topically as a cream. There are prescription and non-prescription forms of minoxidil just to further complicate things. But the ranges of oral minoxidil that you'll see out there and that people take range anywhere from 0.25 milligrams all the way up to five milligrams per day. How do people arrive at the correct dosage for minoxidil? I would hope that if people are working with a physician or if they're not in taking minoxidil, that they would start with the lowest possible dose. So for oral minoxidil, that would be 0.25 milligrams and then increase it as needed rather than jumping in right at five milligrams. Okay, so we're really focusing right now on treatments that relate to the critical requirement for hair stem stem cells to receive blood flow in order to receive oxygen and nutrients to get the hair to grow. And that's really what minoxidil is about. So if we were to take a step back and ask ourselves what other sorts of drug treatments are out there besides minoxidil that increase blood flow and that might increase the rates of hair growth or more likely increase maintenance of hair that one already has. Things like low dose tadalafil. So 2.5 milligram to 5 milligram tadalafil. So this is something that I think deserves attention because it falls under the umbrella of increasing blood flow to the hair stem cell niche in order to maintain hair. It's all about increasing blood flow to support the stem cell niche below the hair follicle. And one way that people are doing that is through mechanical stimulation of the hair follicle and the stem cell niche using what's called microneedling. Microneedling, as the name suggests, is taking a bunch of little needles either in a little stamp, so a little square, or nowadays typically it's a roller. It looks like a paint roller, except it's um, got tons of little needles in rows all over that roller. Those needles range in length from half a millimeter to 2.5 mil millimeters. And one rolls that over the scalp. Microneedling has been shown to do two things. It has been shown to reactivate semi-quiescent populations of stem cells and thereby stimulate more hair growth. It has also, and this is, I think, the best use of microneedling, it has also been shown to be a very effective augment for some of the hormone-based hair regrowth tools and pharmacology that we're going to talk about in a few minutes. So microneedling procedures, things like minoxidil, they all kind of center around this same general theme of increasing blood flow, increasing oxygen, delivery of nutrients, or in the case of microneedling, increasing inflammation just enough at that local site that certain cascades of biological function that relate to proliferation of stem cells or maintenance of stem cell populations are kicked off. Needle lengths of about one millimeter to 2.5 millimeters seem to be more effective than shorter needle lengths. One thing that's very clear is that the combination of microneedling and minoxidil treatment together is far more effective than either of those treatments alone. In addition, the combination of microneedling and minoxidil has been shown to be effective in recovering what are called dead zones. So these are regions of the scalp that are either completely bald or mostly bald for which there is essentially no stem cell population there. And the combination of minoxidil plus microneedling is somehow able to recover those stem cell populations and allow new hair to grow. So this, I would say, is a strong reason to consider consider combining microneedling and minoxidil as opposed to just doing minoxidil or just microneedling. So now I'd like to discuss the ways that one can chemically adjust certain things within the hair growth pathway in order to stimulate hair growth or halt hair loss. The first thing on this list is actually going to be pretty surprising to a number of you, and that's caffeine. Caffeine does many things besides stimulate our central nervous system and make us feel less sleepy. One of the things that caffeine does is it is a fairly potent PDE inhibitor. By being a potent PDE inhibitor, it indirectly directly stimulates IGF-1. And by ingesting caffeine or by applying topical caffeine ointment or cream to the scalp, you can suppress PDE sufficiently enough to increase IGF-1 and increase some hair growth or at least maintain hair growth in that region. No, you can't simply just drink more caffeine in order to accomplish uh, the goal of offsetting hair loss. One other point about caffeine, it does appear that caffeine can not only indirectly stimulate IGF-1 in the antigen phase of hair cell growth by way of reducing PDE and TGF-beta, but it 
also seems to reduce apoptosis, which is naturally occurring cell death of that stem cell niche. It appears that caffeine can offset the death of that niche and potentially maintain the stem cell population longer. So there's one very direct way to increase hair growth and maintain the hair that you have on your head, and that's to increase IGF-1. That can be accomplished through prescription drugs, such as growth hormone and things that stimulate the release of growth hormone and IGF-1. Keep in mind, growth hormone is released from the anterior pituitary during the first hours of sleep, especially when you haven't eaten anything for the two hours prior to sleep, and especially when you get regular bedtimes. If you are going to sleep at variable bedtimes, especially if you go to sleep much later than your usual habitual bedtime, you will miss that growth hormone pulse that normally occurs in the first two to three hours of sleep. You do want to try and get that natural growth hormone release each night. And as I mentioned, there are prescription approaches and those are growth hormone itself and things like sermorellin. In addition to that, regular cardiovascular exercise and resistance exercise, making sure that your body fat percentage is not in excess of where it needs to be. You want to avoid being insulin resistant because being insulin resistant and being obese can indeed lead to hair loss. And there are many people out there who are not obese who nonetheless are experiencing hair thinning and hair loss because they are insulin resistant by way of reduced IGF-1 activity. There are a few supplements. So these are over-the-counter supplements such as myo-inositol taken at dosages of about 900 milligrams before sleep, which by the way can also assist in sleep or things like berberine or metformin, which are known to improve insulin sensitivity. The other thing that's really important for maintaining proper hair growth, this antigen phase, is that you need sufficient iron. This is because iron and ferritin play a key role in the cell growth pathways that go from the stem cells to the stimulation of keratin within the hair itself. For women, the levels of iron that you want are somewhere between 25 and 100, and for men, somewhere between 30 and 150. Fortunately, the tests or the blood tests for iron are usually a very inexpensive add to your current blood panel. Another commonly discussed and used commercial compound for offsetting hair loss and stimulating hair growth is ketoconazole. Sometimes this is known as Nizorol, where Nizorol is the brand name of a shampoo. So ketoconazole has been shown to be effective in increasing hair number. It's also been shown to be effective in increasing hair diameter. Ketoconazole acts as an antifungal that in some way seems to reinforce the properties of sebum at keeping out other fungal infections. And the net effect is a mild reduction in DHT. What is clear is that the use of ketoconazole shampoos two to four times per week with a scalp contact time of about three to five minutes has been shown to give about an 80% response rate of maintaining hair that would otherwise be lost. So that's pretty dramatic, 80%. Now, if you decide to use ketoconazole as an approach to offsetting hair loss, it's very important that you get a hold of a shampoo that's at least 2% concentration of ketoconazole. This is important because a lot of the ones that are available out there, especially online, are going to be 1% or lower. So you want to try and obtain a ketoconazole shampoo of 2% or higher concentration of ketoconazole. 